Well, here's my Z80 Playground version 1.1, which I'm having a lot of fun with. I've spent a lot of time playing with this and it's been really good. So let's get it going, put it through its paces. First, we're going to need something to actually run. So there's Tiny Basic. I've got Tiny Basic in that EEPROM there. Um, we're going to need somewhere to store our Tiny Basic programs. So here's a memory stick, a USB pen drive, and that goes in this little socket here. Here. And we're going to need to plug it in to my PC so I can, because this thing doesn't have any kind of video adapter or anything on it at the moment. Uh, we're going to have to plug it into the PC and use a console window uh, terminal emulator on the PC. So let's boot it up and give it a go. Okay, so just to explain briefly what I'm doing here. This is my Z80 Playground, which is my own design single board computer and uh, it's running on a Z80 processor or Z80 processor. We've got 64K of RAM, we've got some EEPROM, we've got a UART for the serial connection to the PC, and we're reading and writing programs from a memory stick. So I've got the console, uh, which is TerraTerm, up on my PC, and we're viewing what this single board computer is outputting into this console here. And currently, there, there's no program at all. So let's say, we write the program, 10, hello from Tiny Basic. Uh, we'll do a little loop as well for a equals 1 to 10, print a next a. Uh, oh, I'm oh, sorry. I didn't type the line number, 30. <laughs> print a 40 next a. That was a bit confusing, wasn't it? List. There we go, so there's my program. If we run it, there's the output of the program. So the programs are running nicely. Tiny Basic is running well. Now, Tiny Basic really is tiny. It's an example of an open source, one of the, probably the first, or certainly one of the first pieces of open source software from the 1970s. And it is tiny, it's hardly got any commands, but it's got four extra commands now because I've added them in. So the first command I've added is DIR for getting a directory listing. So this is reading from this memory stick here, um, which is why, if I do it again, you'll be able to see the light flashing on the memory stick. Yep, so we're reading there, we're doing DIR from the memory stick. There's a few programs on there, there's a few bits and pieces that were laying around. This is an old memory stick that I found, and it's formatted under FAT format, and I think it's just something like a 128 megabyte memory stick or something, quite an old one. But this module, the CH376S, works fine with FAT16 and FAT32 formatted USB sticks, up to, I think, four gigabytes in size, something like that. So I've got a little routine to do with DIR and show you the size of the files on disk, and um, I'm now gonna try and save my program. So I'll save that program as um, uh, stupid program, stupid.bass. It was a bit of a stupid program. So we saved it as stupid.bass, DIR, and the last thing we have on the list of the, on the directory listing there is stupid.bass. 69 bytes of stupid.bass in actual fact. Um, and if we whip the memory stick out and put it into my computer, yep, so uh, put the memory stick into my PC and the file is here, stupid.bass. And we should be able to open that in Notepad, I think. Yep, so here it is in Notepad++. It looks a bit weird when you look at it because of the way that Tiny Basic works. It stores the line numbers as actual integer numbers, which confuses um, Notepad++. Okay, so we definitely know that the program is on the memory stick. So we put it back in, and let's go back to Tiny Basic. So let's have a look. DIR, stupid.bass is still there. Um, we've still got it in memory, so I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll take, we'll pull the power out. There we go. Power's out. Put the power back in just to check that we're not cheating. Um, so we're back in Tiny Basic, and list nothing there. Just type new just to make sure there's absolutely is nothing there. Um, so now we should be able to load that back in again. So let's have a look. Load stupid dot bass list. Yep, program's there, and we should be able to run it. Yeah, fantastic. So I can definitely 
um, and quite easily actually write programs in Tiny Basic, save them onto the pen drive, load them back in again, and that makes the whole thing so much better. Because up until this point, if I've written a program in Tiny Basic, as soon as I've pulled out the power, I've lost the whole thing, um, which is makes it pretty tedious. So that now means I can move on to my next goal, which is to write a game in Tiny Basic, which is going to be difficult.